Welcome to Real Talk. This is a series dedicated to speaking openly about topics that college students are passionate about and encourage students to not be afraid to use their voice for topics that are important to them. So as you can see based off this title, this first Real Talk is touching on a very sensitive and serious topic that I feel is so prevalent right now for so many college students. Today we're going to be talking about prioritizing mental health in college and I'm going to be sharing a little bit about my mental health journey and ultimately I just want to disclose this to you that I'm not trying to tell you what to do or that this will help you in your particular mental health journey but ultimately this is just to help um, be an outlet and reach out to students that are struggling with mental health no matter what that looks like and that this is an open welcoming and safe space to share that and talk about it. Mental health was never an issue for me until I went away to college for my first year. I just remember always feeling this increased level of anxiety and depression ultimately because I wasn't really happy where I was at the time. Just with a combination of academic pressures and being unhappy with my current environment where I was, on top of, you know, all the anxiety and the pressures as an incoming freshman with living with roommates, um, not being home, not being in the same environment that I'm used to, making new friends, adjusting to a new school atmosphere, even starting small talk with friends I met and even new friends or even new classmates, new people. That's what scared me the most and that's what honestly brought up such great anxiety in my heart and in my mind. The biggest thing for me was I always felt stuck and trapped and I always felt like a completely different person whenever I was experiencing something along the lines of anxiety and depression during my first year of college. Mental health ultimately negatively affected me physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I never really cried and felt so anxious to the point where I was forcing myself to go through this never-ending cycle day in and day out. I literally remember my last day on campus. At that time, I didn't know that but I was under so much anxiety, so much stress, basically feeling super depressed and just totally drained, worn out. The last thing I wanted to do was go through one more class and then just come home late. That was the last thing on my mind. I was just so spent, so done. So I literally bought lunch. I went to the Catholic campus ministry office where I was hanging out with my campus minister and some students and had some friends come in. But even when I was just sitting there trying to relax, trying to eat, trying to just um, keep myself physically nourished, even though I was under so much stress, I literally just was so anxious and so depressed and I was texting my mom and my mom was like, just get on the next train home, just come home, we'll talk about it. So in that moment, I was just very quiet. I was just like, hey, like I gotta go, I'll see you guys. I remember hopping into the Uber and just looking around campus. In the moment I felt trapped, but as I looked out the window and saw like myself driving past campus in the Uber, I just prayed. I prayed just to be heard and for an openness and a boldness to just hold nothing back when I was going to talk to my parents about it when I got home. In that moment, I just sensed the Lord calling me this was time. This was time to take a step back and just entrust myself to him with whatever was coming in this semester off, even though I had no idea what was coming for me. I reached out to my campus minister who I was just in the office with a few minutes before leaving campus and my parents and some of my close friends, my pastors, just letting them know um, that I was in a really rough spot um, mentally and just needed prayer. I didn't know where to go. I was just like, I have no idea what to do. Um, I just needed to get away from campus. I just knew I needed to just take a step away. 
whatever that looked like for me. I didn't know if it was just for the weekend. I didn't know if I was going to be going back into this never ending cycle of just, okay, like it's the weekend, recharge, try to do whatever, and then come back and do the same routine week in and week out. My so-called last day on campus was a day where I was ministered to in such a huge way. I remember in my head knowing that my parents were so like not for like taking a pause with school because I guess they just saw it as like, oh, like she's never going to go back to school again if she ends up taking a break. So I was texting my mom and the moment that she asked if I wanted to take a break from school, I literally just lost it on the train. I bawled my eyes out. I was just like, oh my God, is this actually happening? Like something was happening with like some divine intervention. <laughs> um, honestly, all the divine intervention is God, but it was definitely a God moment and I just did not see it coming. So later that day, I filed my leave of absence and I am telling you, the second I hit that submit button for that leave of absence, this weight or whatever feeling was in my heart, it just felt like there was this heaviness and like, just like these chains just holding me captive. And I felt like I was just stuck and couldn't move for the longest time for almost two and a half, three full years now of just dealing with anxiety and depression in college that it just felt like my chains were broken in that moment and that everything from like head to toe, I'm not even kidding, I just felt like so at peace and I just felt like I was able to breathe again in a sense and just felt like, okay, this is a new start, this is a new beginning and that I'm made new and I'm free from what I thought was holding me captive. Let me tell y'all, taking a break from school was so part of the plan and I just did not see it at the time but as I've been reflecting on my semester off and how it's coming to wrap soon um, this is a very unique and special time in my life and God made it so clear to me every single day I knew that it wasn't going to completely take away anxiety and depression that I still feel anxious and depressed at times of course yeah it was very clear and very evident what the Lord was doing and showing me and teaching me so many things about my faith and just really bringing me back to the heart of why he's the foundation of my life and showing me through experiences of what life is like if I didn't have him. I really want to stress this as an important point here. Asking for and seeking help is certainly not a sign of weakness but a sign of strength. So last year I started seeing a Christian counselor and each session has helped me immensely with not only learning how to work through my anxiety, but also conquer my mental battles with incorporating spiritual practice of prayer and encouraging self-care. I'm gonna be super honest here. At first, I did not even think much about seeing someone to talk about my mental health, but if it wasn't for my mom's encouragement with just seeking that help and talking to a professional, I honestly probably wouldn't be where I am today in my mental health journey. To any college students out there, I really want you to know and assure you to not be afraid to be vulnerable with the people that you trust. They love you, they care about you, they want to help you. So there are people here to support you and that are in your corner. I just heard this recently at a holy hour that I was at this week. This was the verse, this was it. So I'm gonna drop it right here from Matthew chapter 11, if you wanna read along. Matthew 11:28 28 says, "'Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, "'and I will give you rest.'" That just sits so well in my soul and in my heart and just resting in that whenever I'm feeling worn down or when I'm super tired and just don't feel like doing anything or even just after a really long day, I just choose to rest in that. The next verse after verse 28, next two verses actually, excuse me, verses 29 and 30, verse 29 in Matthew, 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sometimes like I'll read the scripture and I'll be like, what does that mean? But literally he's talking about, Jesus is talking about his grace and walking in how he teaches us to live about rest and about how to live our lives and just use rest for good and that rest isn't a bad thing. He knows our need for rest. He sure does because he lived through it when he was in the world. You know, he lived through what the human life is like and he knows it all too well and he knows that we need to rely on him and doing that requires us to rest in him and that takes trust and surrender but guess what it is all worth it taking a break from academics for me meant time to recharge realign focus for the future or major change in my major of study personal life changes, reconnecting with loved ones and friends, regaining freedom to put myself first. I found myself leaning more towards spiritual practices like prayer, personal devotions, and attending mass regularly every week during this season in my life with the semester break. I'm doing this for a purpose and for a reason because I want to connect with my Father in Heaven and yeah. It's gonna be worth it for your mental health, your spiritual health, your emotional well-being, your physical well-being, everything, every part of your well-being because God created us for a beautiful purpose and he wants us to be fully restored, not just by the things of this world, you know, although they are great, some of them, not all of them, but he just holds out to us every single moment, every single day that he is the ultimate source of rest, of comfort, of peace, and consolation.